What's going on, everybody? Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. I am Darkside Phil, and I welcome you here to my gameplay streams for the day. Um, some interesting stuff to talk about today. A couple things in regards to Twitch, actually. Updates and stuff. <laughs> that we'll talk about here on the pre-stream. Uh, today is Saturday, the 3rd of October, 2020. There's a couple things I'd like to talk about right off the bat. Before we even get to games and schedule. First of all, my health. Well, my ear is almost completely better. In fact, the swelling is completely gone. The pain is completely gone. I have a little bit of tightness remaining in my right jaw. Um, likely because of the swelling, you know, probably wore out all the muscles and everything, and the nerves there in the right jaw. But outside of that, almost 100%. I put in my medicine this morning, and usually when I put in the medicine, my ear clogs up for a while. In this case, I put it in, and after I pulled the gauze out, I can hear almost fully. In fact, I would say... I'm pretty much good to go. The problem is I have that little wick inside my ear that the doctor put there earlier this week. And that's going to have to come out naturally. Now, I still have today and tomorrow I'm supposed to be using this medicine. You're supposed to be do a seven-day regimen of this antibiotic eardrop. Uh, I'm actually going to do more. I think I may even do an extra one to two days just to be safe because I did the same thing in early September and then the damn thing came back, okay? So I may just to be rather safe than sorry... Do an extra day or two of the medicine because I have more more eardrops that I can do. Okay, but anyway, <clears throat> the good news is my hearing is pretty much back. And I'm not going to put headphones on for the rest of this week. I'm still going to have them around my neck. I'm not chancing it. What I'm going to do is when I come back uh, next week, right? Next week, Wednesday, the first day of next week, I'll start wearing the headphones again. Okay? <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. Um, so that's the good news, and I told you guys about this yesterday, but just to reiterate, I do have a doctor's appointment with an ENT, ear, nose, and throat doctor. It's a phone appointment in roughly two weeks where I'm going to basically explain all the crap that's been going on to me, uh, to the doctor and see what the doctor has to say, if they have recommendations or they want, actually want me to go in for a physical appointment, but that's in about two weeks' time, okay? <clears throat> Between now and then, some changes I'm making... Um, I'm going to get new pillows this week, new pillow pillows that will aerate rather than these old ass decade old memory foam pillows that I've been using, uh, which are incredibly comfortable, but I don't think they're very good for ear health. They create a big humid environment. I, I believe when you lay on them, um, so I'm going to do that and, you know, continue to disinfect and continue to do the things that change that I already instituted. Uh, and I hope that this is it. The other good news is I am not seeing any signs that the infection has carried over to my left ear. This is the first time in the three times that I've gotten ear infection this year. This is the only time it has not carried over. And I have to think that has to be due to the changes I made. You know, I think actually it was the pillow because I would have the infected ear laying on the pillow and then I would switch ears that I would be sleeping on. And I think the infection would just jump from one ear to the other. So I think I avoided that. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's the health update. It's good news. Let's hope for the best. Let's again, knock on wood. I'm not superstitious, but... Please, don't let the ear infection now carry over. Please let this be the end of it. And hopefully after I talk to the ENT, um, I'll have a more definitive answer on things I can do to stop this from ever happening again <clears throat> and go from there, okay? Fair enough. Um, now, there's a couple things about Twitch I'd like to talk about, but before we get to that, sadly, I have bad news, very bad news. This morning, I received a $100 chargeback from a tip from around the middle of September, and this sucks because this means today, literally, I'm starting at negative 100, which is bullshit, you know? But it is what it is. I'm trying to fight it. I don't know if I'm going to be successful or not. Um, I've provided the information, but chances are this is the guy who's been using stolen credit cards, you know? That's, the, that's what I'm assuming. This is the guy who's been coming every day and do, dropping fake tips with stolen credit cards. And it's never a registered PayPal account because it's always him using someone else's card through Express Checkout. He tried it yesterday. He did it three fucking times yesterday. He was on the streams. And one, one of the times he impersonated Sung Kwan, uh, a stream viewer, who we all recognize that name, right? Sung Kwan. He impersonated him. <clears throat> and then he did a couple others. And now every tip that comes in, 
that's significant sized, I kind of have to be skeptical. I have to go look at PayPal and see, is this Express Checkout and is this the guy with no information? Because usually it's him. And now I just now I'm just refunding them. Now when these, these tips come in, I see I say, fuck this, and I just refund it. Because I know I'm just going to have to, if I don't, I'm going to have to fight it after the fact. It's going to be a major pain in my ass. All right? So, this really sucks. Um, I don't want to be start, starting negative 100, but I am. So today, during today's stream, if you like the content, you want to support, please tip me. All right? I'm already negative, and it would be nice to be able to make that up today in some capacity. I don't know if I'll be able to, but we'll see. Okay? <clears throat> All right. All right. Um, now let's talk about Twitch. There's a couple things about Twitch I would like to talk about today. Okay? First of all, Twitch changed the font in all the chats and everywhere on Twitch. If you haven't noticed, all the text looks different. Right? They did this over the last couple of days. If you haven't noticed yet, you probably haven't refreshed your screen. Because this morning I did, and all the text changed. Um, what's weird about this? Okay? On my desktop, it looks kind of shitty. Like, on my desktop computer, where I sit, I look at the dashboard of Twitch and everything, it looks kind of annoying. Like, it's actually not as visible and a little bit more annoying to me. I don't know, maybe it's just because it changed, but it just does look a little bit more annoying. But now, I'm on my, uh, my laptop. I just refreshed the chat room on my laptop. Now, on my laptop, what I do is I, I, I pop out the chat. What that means is I don't actually sit on my dashboard on Twitch and read the chat there. I pop it out as a separate window and I blow it up so that way it's way more legible on my laptop. And the truth is, it actually looks much better on my laptop. <laughs> I don't know why, but like I, it's more legible, which is good. It means it'll be easier for me to read your, your text and everything. So I think for desktop, it's like less or worse, but if you pop out the chat and blow it up, it actually looks better. So... Kind of a mixed bag, but I'm happy. Actually, I'm happy about it because it, I, I thought it was going to be terrible on my laptop, which is where I, I read your guys' text all day. But no, it's, it looks actually better. So that's good. Um, there is an upcoming change to Twitch <clears throat> that I'd like you guys to know about. Because <clears throat> interesting. And it may actually affect certain playthroughs of mine. All right? So as you guys know, sadly in the last year, there has been a crackdown on licensed music whether it was on YouTube or Twitch or both. Um, games that have licensed music in them, in particular, on YouTube, lots of content ID matches and even videos being muted or blocked. Here on Twitch, there's actually been streams that have been affected by it. Um, in particular, <clears throat> I used to archive my streams on Twitch temporarily as a backup measure, and then I would delete them and upload the videos to, to YouTube, and sometimes even the live archives would get muted or blocked because it had licensed music in it. Of course, as we all know, earlier this year I had false DMCA claims against me here on Twitch, and I was nervous <clears throat> that if I played a game that had licensed music in it, that someone could abuse that system <clears throat> to take down my streams, right? As well, Twitch has a new service that they're going to be launching fully for everyone soon. Right now it's in beta. And what it is is their own music service. They're clearing hundreds of tracks of music that people can use on their streams, royalty-free, no issues. It's a free service. You don't have to pay for it. And this is interesting because I used to have something like this when I was part of these different partnership networks on YouTube, when I was part of Machinima, and then when I joined Curse, they both had these partnerships with this company and i can't even remember the name of the company anymore where you could get music to use in your videos and it was free and you didn't have to worry about anyone was going to try to take your video down on youtube for it um i used that music very frequently in my edited videos in fact that whole year that i did ko gaming what was it 2016 um i was using that music constantly in the videos for ko gaming okay <clears throat> so Supposedly, this service, when it goes live, because by the way, it's in beta right now. It is not fully licensed. It is not fully launched. It means that they're working on it now. But if they do, you know, get this service fully launched, when I'm playing a game, like for example, Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out. And as you know, when you're driving around in Grand Theft Auto, there's licensed music playing in the car. 
Well, I can't do that. I'd be able to turn off the radio and I'd be able to turn on music from this service. Same thing with a game like Forza Horizon. You know, I've actually really liked Forza Horizon 3 and 4. I thought they were very, very fun, chill games. But <clears throat> when I tried to use the music, boom. Everything got muted or content ID claimed or both on YouTube. I'd be able to play this music and actually have music in the background. So we'll see. The thing, the thing is, <clears throat> even though it sounds like a good idea, I still I, it might not even benefit me. Because I probably wouldn't be able to hear it. You guys remember, I get my audio directly from the consoles. I don't get my audio from the PC. I pull my audio directly from the consoles. And because of that, if I was playing Twitch music, I wouldn't even be able to hear it. <laughs> so maybe it would be a benefit for you guys and not for me. <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> then again, um, you got to realize this is a long-term thing. This is something they're working on now and it's not ready to go yet. Long term, I may get a new PC and a new capture set up entirely. So, we'll see what happens, okay? So, anyway, just a few things with Twitch that I wanted to discuss before we moved on. Also, before we get to the game schedule, again, some updates. First of all, please continue to nominate games for the upcoming Halloween event. All right. Now, here's the thing. Last night, I actually had some time to go look at some of the games that have been nominated for the Halloween event. I get the feeling people have no fucking idea what kind of an event this is. The Halloween event that I'm doing is the same as every year. All right? It's a one-day marathon where I dress up in costume and I play a variety of games. Now, in previous years, sometimes I've enforced that we must play horror games only. And I've asked people to only nominate horror games. This year, I opened it up. And I said, I'll open up nominations for any kind of game. Then yesterday I went and I looked at the nominations list and I cringed and I facepalmed and I just shook my head and said, I don't know what the hell is wrong with people. All right? You want to know what the top nominations are? Street Fighter V. Why? I just played it. Didn't rage during the rage -a Told everyone I'm not learning other characters because I don't like this game and it's a waste of everyone's time. Why the fuck would you nominate that again two months in a row? It doesn't even make sense. Right? Danganronpa V3 or Ultra Despair Girls. Danganronpa. You want me to start a 40 plus hour playthrough during an hour segment of a Halloween marathon. Uh, what? So do you see what I'm saying? The games that were nominated are like, these are not even games that make any fucking sense. Now, by the way, those were not the only games nominated. There were some other really good games nominated that I felt were might actually be pretty good. For example, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Very Halloween-oriented, very difficult retro game. Could be cool to play for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. I've only played the original Five Nights at Freddy's, and I felt that it was absolutely god-awful terrible. Playing the one of the later ones, all right, years and years later, actually on Halloween, may actually be interesting. Okay, at least there's a reason to play it right um someone came up with the idea of me playing some of the anniversary titles for the sega cd so for example corpse killer 25th anniversary edition or double switched uh, 25th anniversary edition or both both games are weird as shit both games are from an era where fmv full motion video was new to gaming and corpse killer in particular is a horror game even though it's pretty bad it might be pretty fun to play on halloween okay um, so there you go. Like, that's the, some of the stuff that's good and bad about the nominations. Now, just for clarification purposes, this is not a process by which we're going to, oh, the game with the most votes is going to, by far, it's just going to get right into the event. Fuck no. Do you really think I'm playing Street Fighter V on Halloween? Of course I'm not. I'm not an idiot. So, what we're going to do is I'm using it as a guideline. I get, I get to see, judge some interest and get ideas. The other thing is, like, I never would have thought about playing Zombies Ate My Neighbors. So this is a good thing you get a good idea from the nominations and then what I'll do is think about what what's viable what can I easily play via different methods and get a good a good <clears throat> lineup of games that I can play on Halloween. So for, for, it's hilarious cuz you know it'll happen. The people who who voted for the dumbest shit like Dongan Rampa on Halloween will be why is he even asked for nominations? Well, because it's a good way to get ideas and a good way to sort out the nonsense from idiots. <laughs> 
When I see Danganronpa, and by the way, I'm not shitting on Danganronpa. I played the first two games. Both of them were incredibly interesting. They're not games for a fucking Halloween marathon. <laughs> it makes no sense. So anyway, um, there you go. And so FYI, I am working on it. I'm reading your nominations, and I'm going to get more information, or more nominations and more ideas, I'm sure, over the course of this month. Please keep nominating games, especially if you have a game that you think would be perfect for the Halloween event. <clears throat> Please dominate. Type exclamation point marathon into the stream chat to do that. Please also continue to vote on the category of Halloween costume that I'll be wearing during the Halloween event by typing exclamation point costume into the stream chat. Um, I believe a video game character and pop culture icon are neck and neck, but also there's uh, a third one, I think horror character, that's very close. So the vote, the polling is close. It could flip at any moment with just a few votes. So please head over there, vote, and what I'll do is, before I head out on Tuesday, to go look at stuff out in the area, notably Halloween costumes, I'll see how you guys are voting and see if I can get some ideas. Okay? <clears throat> Good stuff. Um, also, ladies and gentlemen, I have completely forgotten to mention this until basically today. Are you aware that Ask the King, my Q&A show that I haven't done since July is returning this week. I bet you didn't know that, because I didn't mention it. <laughs> I was looking at my forums, I was like, what the hell? Holy shit. <clears throat> yes. Ask the King is happening this Thursday. Yes. Yes, it's happening. There's no way you, you can't stop it. How do you stop it? You don't. <laughs> you don't. You just let it happen. All right? So it's coming this Thursday. Please post up your questions for Ask the King. Type exclamation point, Ask the King into the stream chat. You'll get a link where you can go post up questions. The more questions I get, the better the show is. As of last night, I only had 20 questions. All right? And I need more. I would like to double that by Thursday when the show starts, when the show airs. So please post up your questions. Please, please, do it. <laughs> I'm politely telling you to do it. <clears throat> okay? So that's going to be the Thursday. Yeah, finally, it's coming back. I haven't done it in so long, I forgot about the show. But yeah, it's coming back this Thursday. It makes sense, because this week, there's no new releases at all. Good week to do it, right? Last couple of months have been crazy hectic, because there have been multiple new releases over the summer, unexpectedly because of everything happening with delays and everything, but now, finally, it's a good time to do it. So it shall return, okay? All right, now that we got all of that stuff out of the way, we can actually talk about the streams, <clears throat> okay? Is that okay with you guys? You want to actually talk about what we're going to do on stream? No? What would you like to do? Mukbang. You want a mukbang? Okay. No. Anyway, um, let's talk. So today, we're continuing on with Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. After a very fun premiere stream yesterday, it's time for my second session. Okay? People are saying if you rush through the game, you can beat it in like eight hours. Which means, technically, I could beat it today or one more stream. Um, I'm not rushing through it. I'm taking my time because I want to see if I can get collectibles. I want to see what I can unlock, you know? Now, I'm not great at it. I mean, honestly, I died a million times yesterday. People were counting. They actually said it was like 1,500,042 times or something like that that I died yesterday. And that's okay. That's okay because I suck. And I openly admit that I suck. I was very bad at the game yesterday. I was failing left and right. <clears throat> you know what? In life, sometimes you just got to admit when you're not good at something. And I'm not good at this. Absolutely not. But I'm going to beat it for sure. I just it might take me you know, a little longer because I'm a little slow. So, we'll see what happens. But I'm having... I am having... Uh, I am having fun with the game. Um, I like the modernized graphics of the game. I like the fact that now there's new characters, apparently. We've already played as Tana. And she plays very differently than the other characters. And apparently there's more than one new character in the game. <clears throat> now, will I go for 100% completion? Likely it's impossible for me. Because not only do you have to beat the stages without losing three lives, you also have to get all these hidden boxes and everything. I'm not saying no, 
I'm just saying I don't know how viable it would be, nor I don't know how entertaining it would be for you to watch me going back to these stages over and over after the fact and trying to get every little single thing in each stage. So I'm not saying no. I'm saying I don't know. I'm saying let's play today and see how far we get. I'm assuming probably one more major stream I'll actually beat the main storyline and then see if anything secret can be unlocked or whatever if I go back and get all the stuff. Okay? Um... So let's see how it goes. But I'm having fun. I'm excited to, uh, for the today's stream to see more of the game. I hope you guys are too. Um, I'm getting a cool vibe out of it. I like the retro the retro gameplay combined with some modernized stuff is always a good thing, right? Um, later tonight, Fall Guys returns. Yes, my weekly session of Fall Guys is later tonight. <clears throat> I know you guys like this game and you like to see me play it more. And that may actually happen this coming week, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So Fall Guys, later tonight, two hours of Battle Royale fun. Hope you'll join me for that around 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, tomorrow. <clears throat> Tomorrow's up in the air. Tomorrow we can either do more Crash 4, if you so choose and like the game enough, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or we can go to Super Mario Galaxy HD and we can wrap up that playthrough. What I mean by that is all we have left is one more star in one of the, the, the Magma World or whatever it is. The final Bowser stage. And once you beat that, apparently it unlocks the ability to go back to the, to the worlds and get the purple stars, which are the flying challenges. Um, which apparently are, can be quite challenging because you need to really time the flying well and everything in order to get all the purple stars. So after that... I don't know if there's anything left in the game. People were saying maybe you have to replay, replay it as Luigi or something, which I may dabble in, but there's no way I'm replaying the entire game from the start as Luigi. You know, like, that's ugh, that's a far a tall order to replay an entire game with a new character, okay? So likely, tomorrow's the final stream. Well, excuse me, not tomorrow. Whenever I play Super Mario Galaxy again, that's the last stream of the playthrough, okay? So... We could do that tomorrow, or we could do that Monday, and tomorrow would be more Crash Bandicoot 4. All right? I kind of leave that in your discretion. I'm going to ask you guys over the course of the day, would you rather see more Crash tomorrow, or would you like me to do a stream of Mario? Okay? And whatever I don't do tomorrow, I'll be doing on Monday regardless. So it's only a day's difference, but I, I would like your feedback on what you should would like me to see me do uh, on Sunday's main gameplay stream. Fair enough? Okay. And then, Sunday night, it will be the conclusion of Mafia Definitive Edition. A playthrough that I have done for about a week now. It's been a great playthrough, and there's about two and a half missions left, so it shouldn't take long to beat it. <clears throat> but I'm excited to see how it ends. You know, very much a, an exciting and, and interesting, well-written game, much like Mafia 2 was. <clears throat> I'm not shocked. You know, this is kind of what I was expecting. All right, so yes, tonight or tomorrow night, excuse me, the conclusion of Mafia. Then on Monday, as I already stated, whatever we don't play on Sunday, I'll be playing on Monday's main gameplay stream. And then Monday night, it is an end game stream of Fire Emblem Three Houses. We are at the very end of the game at this point. We're at chapter twenty of twenty one, and we're about to enter the fight. So I'll be trying to beat the fight. And then any kind of filler content leading into the end of the game, that'll be Monday night stream. I'm off from streaming on Tuesday. I'll be taking that opportunity to look around for Halloween costumes, to buy new pillows for myself so I don't get an ear infection again, and do various things. When I come back on Wednesday, <clears throat> the main gameplay stream will be whatever I'm still playing. <laughs> Likely Crash 4, and it may be the final Crash 4 stream, depending on how long the game actually is. Um, or... If I end up, like, finishing up with Crash 4 before then, because we don't know how long the game really is, so maybe I'll beat it by Monday or be done with it by Monday, all right? Then I'm looking to start one to two new playthroughs this coming week because there is nothing new going on until the middle of the month. Around the middle of the month, we've got major new releases. There's a new Amnesia game. There's a Pokemon expansion. There's uh, Watch Dogs Legion. There's the update for Fall Guys coming up that's going to turn it into Fall Guys Season 2. There's there's just a lot later on this month, alright? So that being said, um, I'm looking for new playthroughs. Now, 
some of the options that I'm looking at are quite unique. Number one, we could try Star Wars Squadrons, which is a game that did come out uh, yesterday, which apparently is just a lot of dog fighting and stuff, although apparently there is a narrative-based story, um, and there's multiplayer. I skipped it because, number one, I'm not a very big Star Wars nut, and number two, because I don't usually play these kind of flying dog fighting games. But some people are upset that I skipped it. All right? So maybe I'll play it. Maybe I won't. That's an option. I can check out this hot new game, Genshin Impact. <clears throat> okay? So, Genshin Impact. What is it? A free-to-play game on the Switch where it's open-world RPG action, much like Zelda Breath of the Wild. And a lot of people have actually drawn direct comparisons between them. However, some people are saying the game is a big grind and basically what they're trying to do with the game is get you to do the microtransactions to actually make progress because outside of that you can't really make much progress it's just a ginormous grind so oh i did i say switch my bad ps4 i didn't mean to say switch it's on the ps4 my, it's my fault i said exactly i was i had to switch on the brain because i've been playing a lot of switch lately <clears throat> um so anyway um it, it could be something interesting to check out I'm not necessarily saying this would be a lengthy thing that I would go back to a million times, but being that it is available for free, maybe just to give it a shot on a stream and see what the hell it's all about, right? Um, I guess we'll see. But anyway, that's another consideration, okay? A third consideration would be to go and do the DLC for the Outer Worlds that came out last month. I really, really enjoyed the Outer Worlds last year. It was one of my favorite games of the year. But... Last month when that DLC came out, there were other new releases and things going on that kind of took up my attention. And so I didn't really get a chance to focus in on it and do the DLC. I could go back and do that, okay? Outside of that, the only other thing I can really think of right now is if someone could come up with a, like a horror-themed game just to randomly throw into the mix and play, I could do that too. Um, because it is Halloween month, of course. So those I, I would say those are the options right now. Um of stuff that I could do for the coming one to two weeks. Really, I got about two weeks to kill before all the hot stuff starts hitting for the month of uh, October. So, what I would say is, think about it, okay? Let me know what we're going to be doing. I think we should, just as we just did right now, we should poll over the weekend. We should poll people and see what they have to say about this and see what would you like to see. So, v way early on the stream, we ran a poll... And people voted for Star Wars Squadrons, but only it was only 12 votes. Right now, we just ran a poll, and it, it was Genshin Impact, and that was 28 votes. <clears throat> I think later on in the stream, when even more people are here, we should do another poll and see how the votes come out. Okay? So let's see. But please give, keep giving me your uh, opinions on this. Because really, it's up in the air for me. Like, I'm not leaning towards anything, honestly. I'm cool with doing whatever just to, to do some fun stuff until the new releases hit. It is, this is a rare occurrence where we're into the hardcore gaming season or the fall gaming season of 2020. And because of the way this year went down with the coronavirus delaying certain games and screwing certain releases up, we have a two-week gap in the new releases. But then, all of a sudden, in mid-October, it's like release, 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 all the way through late October, and then next month, November, is the busiest gaming month I think I've seen in about 10 years. Because within a three-week period next month, there's like 20 releases. I'm not exaggerating. Go take a look. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Because what it is is, first of all, games that were already scheduled to come out are coming out, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, Yakuza 7, uh, Cyberpunk, obviously, among others, Call of Duty... But then you've got games that are coinciding with the launch of the new consoles, like Demon's Souls, Sackboy. Um, <clears throat> there's just a... I'm telling you, next month will be fucking nuts. I don't even know how on earth I'm going to handle it. It Maybe I, I pick and choose. I play two games at a time, and the rest just sit around, and then the next week, two games, and then the next week, two games, because I don't see how I could possibly get through them all playing them all at once. There's just too many games, especially... Assassin's Creed and Yakuza 7 and Cyberpunk, you know those games are going to be insanely lengthy. You know that. Those are going to be playthroughs that are going to be going on for a while. Remember Assassin's Creed Odyssey? It took me like two months to beat. Any Yakuza game usually takes me two months to beat. 
And if Cyberpunk is anything like the length of Witcher 3, I mean, holy fucking testicle Tuesday. This is going to be insanity trying to play these games, right? <clears throat> holy crap. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be nuts. Now, what I've been just talking about is what I'm doing on my main streams, all right? What about the night streams coming up, okay? Well, the good news is that I just stated we're very close to the end of Fire Emblem. And Fire Emblem has been something that has been taking up my night streams for a while. And finally, we're going to have some freedom on the night streams to do other stuff. So one more stream of Fire Emblem, and it looks like we'll beat it. What I'm thinking of doing is Wednesday night, we'll do a night stream of Batman Return to Arkham City, <clears throat> where we do more Riddler content, which, by the way, we're almost done. What I need to do is do the interior areas. We actually are about to wrap up the museum. And I think there's like two more riddles we need to get in the museum. And then we can move on <clears throat> to the other interior areas and, and finish those up. And once we get all the different trophies in the interior areas, then it's just the top, you know, the, the open map of Gotham City to finish, which there's still not much left. And then we can do the final Riddler thing. So we're going to do a stream of that probably Wednesday night. All right. Thursday night, I'm strongly considering just finishing the fuck up with Fire Emblem. Because it's going to be one more stream for Chapter 21. And I think I just want to end it. I would get it over with. You know, it's been such an ongoing, lengthy, drawn-out fucking thing. That I think I just want to get it over with on Thursday night. Okay? Then on Friday, we can maybe start one of these new playthroughs, as I said. Uh, considering what you guys are looking at, looking at what you'd like me to do. <clears throat> um, and then Friday night, the return of Street Fighter. All right? And then probably over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we'll do one or two of the new playthroughs, whatever they're going to be. And the night streams will be like Fall Guys um, and other stuff that you guys want to see. Because that's the thing. I will now have open night streams. It won't be, oh, God, I can't do what I want anymore. Now, <clears throat> a question that I have for all of you, all right? A question that I have for all of you. Please listen. It's very important. Last night, I played Super Mario Bros. 35. It was two hours of Battle Royale survival fun. By the end of the night, not only had I done multiple top three finishes, I had won first place both in the standard mode and the special modes. So, if anything, I think I showed that once I learned the pattern of exactly what to do and how to win, I could win. Um, especially because I'm pretty good at classic Super Mario Brothers. So, <clears throat> after doing that, the question is... Do you guys want to see me do it again? Because there's really nothing new to it. I've seen everything that's pretty much in it right now. The only thing that would happen is it would unlock further stages of Super Mario Bros. 1 if I kept playing it. But after doing it once and kind of winning, I'm curious if there's a reason for me to even go back to it or was it kind of a one-and-done deal? You know, This reminds me of Tetris 99. The first time I played Tetris 99, I did not win a game and people kept asking me to play it again. The second time I played Tetris 99, I won a game. And people were like, well, you know, you did everything in the game. So there's no point in continuing. We've seen everything. And so I never went back to it and never played it again. Okay? So what I need is your opinion. Once you see it, because I, you know, <clears throat> if you haven't, um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you haven't watched the video yet, or videos yet, please do. They're live over on DSP Gaming on YouTube. Once you see them, give me your opinion on them. Let me know if this is something that you'd like me to add into the night rotations as something, you know, interesting or long-term, and I'll consider it, all right? I'm not committing to it, but I'll consider it, okay? So, night streams coming up this week likely will be Batman, the conclusion of Fire Emblem, Street Fighter, and Fall Guys. Now, will there be any more of those? Maybe I'll double up on one or two of them? Possibly. If you guys are liking Fall Guys, maybe we'll do an extra Fall Guys stream. Maybe we'll do an extra Batman stream and see if we can actually finish up the Batman Riddler stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> we'll see. But that's kind of what I'm planning on. And then, you know, then after that, if we start finishing up stuff like Batman, now I've really got time at night to do whatever. I and mean, maybe we could even start different, like, late-night chill projects and stuff. Um, of course, there's always going to be people who say, well, when are you bringing back Minecraft or Morrowind? To which I answer, I don't know. And I'll be honest with all of you, I don't know if they're coming back. You know, Minecraft was something that was very interesting for about a year and a half, okay? We had a lot of fun chilling in Minecraft, building projects. But by the time that we basically put it on hiatus, 
<clears throat> we were just working on a, a few projects. Like, oh, someone wanted me to build a statue of me wearing a vest or whatever, right? It wasn't even like I was super engaged in the game anymore. It was more just every week build a project, every week build a project. Um, and quite frankly, you know, I, I'm kind of disengaged from it at this point. And Mr. Papa Vera, the person who was helping me with Minecraft, also was disengaged from it. He was actually here the other day, and people were talking to him about it. And he's like, yeah, I basically hit the wall with Minecraft. I'm not too interested in it anymore. I know that he'd been playing No Man's Sky and other stuff, but basically he doesn't really care about Minecraft anymore. So, you know, it wouldn't even be... It basically would be like kind of dropping all the projects and just dicking around in Minecraft, not even really doing anything in particular interesting, if we ever did go back to it. Um, as for Morrowind, admittedly, the reason that Morrowind was something that I think worked was more because of our interaction rather than the game itself. The game is very outdated. Not to say that it's bad, it's just very outdated. And it's very cool to play Morrowind and see the roots out of which grew things like Oblivion and Skyrim. But it's not the most riveting game. Um, and, you know, I think you guys made Morrowind more interesting by helping me every week playing it and everything. But again, this is now a game I haven't played in like two months. <clears throat> and is there going to be any interest of me jumping back into Morrowind at this point? I don't know. <clears throat> What I would say is one thing I definitely want to do this month. I do want to play some Animal Crossing coming up. I do want to start adding that to the night rotation at least once a week. Because the fall event did launch. And in the fall event you get to gather things like pumpkins and build pumpkin patches. And craft things with the pumpkins. You also get to buy and gather candy. And I guess what it is is this is building up to a big Halloween event. Where everyone's going to be able to have like Halloween costumes and trick or treating and stuff on the island. So that's kind of fun. Because it's chill, we don't have too much seriousness during it, it's more relaxing, I'll be able to see a few new things, and I'll be able to, by the way, I'll get to see how the item looks now in autumn, because I'm sure it's different. Last time I played it was the middle of summer, so I'm sure that now it's autumn, probably the appear, uh, appearance of the island has changed and everything. <clears throat> so I do want to do that, Now I'm not saying, don't worry, I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to do it like ten times, I'm just saying, maybe once a week, you know, just to check in, and then near Halloween, maybe we'll do it once, maybe on Halloween we'll do it, who knows, if there's something special on Halloween day. Or whatever. Um, so we'll see. We shall see. Uh, how it goes. But I definitely want to j jump back into that at some point. Maybe even this week. Maybe we'll do a one-off stream of Animal Crossing this week. To see what's new on Paw Print Island. Since I haven't played in a million years. I'm sure all the people will be like. Where have you been? We thought you died. <laughs> Alright. So that's the deal. This week. The continuation of Crash Bandicoot 4, the conclusion of Super Mario Galaxy HD, the conclusion of Fire Emblem coming up, um, some more Fall Guys tonight, alright, good stuff, and of course the conclusion of Mafia Definitive Edition tomorrow night. This coming week, there's going to be the return of Ask the King on Thursday, but in addition to that, the start of one or more new projects, depending on how things go and what you guys are asking for, I consider doing so, you know, a horror game, or maybe this Genshin Impact, or... Maybe Star Wars Squadrons, you know, we'll see what you guys want, but I'm open to suggest Hollow Knight. I own the game. I'm, I'm open to starting up a playthrough of Hollow Knight. Okay? <clears throat> so we shall see. Okay? <laughs> Alright. Now, don't worry. Around the middle of this month, there's a lot of good content. For example, Fall Guys getting their Season 2 Medieval update is probably going to be put reinvigoration into the game and make it even more interesting than it is right now. Okay? Um, I would also say uh, a new Amnesia game is going to be pretty neat. A new Halloween-themed horror game, you know, during Halloween month will be pretty good. Um, the Pokemon DLC, although some people think Pokemon's boring, um, the, I think the DLCs are good. And I enjoy getting, you know, doing the Pokedex stuff and everything with you guys. So that should be fun, a send-off. That'll be a final send-off for Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield because that's it. After that, there's no more content for the game. So, that'll be fun. And then, um, later on this month, Watch Dogs Legion. I think we're all wondering if this game's going to be any good. Because since the day it was announced, the fact that it's these characters who you recruit and then they could die and stuff, it's a different concept. And I'm curious if the game's going to be good, you know. And then, of course, at the end of the month, we got a little, uh, little Hope. The next game from the Dark Pictures Horror Anthology. We got my Halloween event coming up. Good stuff. This month will be good. And then, of course, November's insane. So... This should be good. This should be good. I'm excited for the rest of this month, my friends. 
Okay, hold on one second. Because I am going to switch over and do some shout-outs, but my ear medicine is leaking. Yuck. I know it sounds gross, because it is. But it's kind of leaking. I want to dry my ear out. Hold on. <clears throat> Yuck. <laughs> Too much medicine. <clears throat> Ugh. Yuck, yuck, yuck. There it goes. Try it out now. That's better. That's better. Yeah, it's kind of weird because when you have an ear infection, okay, <clears throat> you get strict instructions. Keep your ear dry. The key way to keep your ear from being infected is keeping it dry. Then they tell you, oh yeah, four times a day, fill your ear with liquid medicine. Like, wait, what? So what is it? Keep it dry or fill it with liquid? You know? So what I'm supposed to do is, you know, get get the, the medicine in there um, and hold it in for like 15, 20, 30 minutes with gauze. And then once it's in there and saturated into the ear, then I can dr kind of dry it out. And then I just got to re-wet it every... You know, I do it four times a day. I do it when I first wake up. I do it during my break during this stream. I do it. And then between the streams, after I eat dinner, I do it right before I do my late stream. And then late at night, at like 11 o'clock p.m., I do my final dose. <laughs> Very exciting. <clears throat> okay. All right, guys. Now, let us... Do shout outs. By the way, before we do shout outs, for those of you who were not here at the beginning of the stream, I've already gotten a $100 chargeback today. Yeah. That's not an exaggeration. It was this morning, $100 fucking dollar chargeback. And I'm arguing it. <clears throat> you know, I'm arguing it, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to win. Um, In fact, this one looks like it's the guy who does stolen credit card shit. This is not someone who, oh, I put my credit card in, now I'm going to lie to my company and try to get my money back. This looks like this guy who does stolen credit card shit. So, it's likely this probably will not be coming back to me. Um, so, if you want to help with that, please contribute during today's stream. All right? Any contributions are appreciated. If you want to directly help defray this fucking chargeback, you can tip me. Uh, as you know, we have the usual tip goals in effect. $50 tip goal. If we hit 50 bucks in tips, I'll put on the Gunner glasses. $100, I'll put on a vest. Um, every vest is eligible for platinum. Last night, we did platinum on the late stream with Mario. <clears throat> Wait, or did we? <clears throat> Hold on a second. Yeah, we did, right? It was platinum for Mario, right? So, it would be anything but platinum. Yes, it was platinum. I'm remembering now. Um, so, yeah, any vest is eligible. And, you know, really, I would really appreciate the help today. I don't like how starting off negative. Like, literally today, I'm starting off negative $100. <laughs> Time to go to work. Oh, you have to make up this money that you really earned recently, but someone's a fucker, piece of shit, you know, criminal, and now you got to make it back up. It's fucked up. So, please consider contributing. It is not mandatory or required at all, but it is greatly appreciated, especially with all the cost of games coming up in the next couple of months, the cost of the PS5 console, all the stuff going on. Behind the scenes with chargebacks. Your contributions now are highly appreciated. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Now, let's go ahead and get to shoutouts. Overnight, Golden Colts did several different cheers. The first cheer he did is actually pretty momentous. Because I mentioned this the other day, but I wasn't 100% on the date. And now we have it. It's official. Ladies and gentlemen, as of today, it's today. I have been a content creator on YouTube... For 12 years. <laughs> 12 years of Dark Side Phil on YouTube. It all started with a video titled Star Wars The Force Unleashed Star Destroyer Gameplay Sucks. October 2nd, 2008. I uploaded this video. I was sick. I had a sore throat. I remember recording it. I lived with my parents at the time. Yes, this is all true. I lived with my parents at the time. I was sick as shit. I was a huge fan of the Angry Video Game Nerd and Nostalgia Critic. And I saw that these are guys that had talent, but not a lot of budget. 
And if they could make fun videos, I felt I could too. So I took my digital camera, I pointed it at my television, <clears throat> and I recorded. I did commentary over a game. And the video, at first, didn't do much at all. And admittedly, if you actually look at the videos that I put out there for the first few months of you know, October, November, even December of 2008, they didn't get much traction. They got a few, maybe a few thousand views each. They weren't super popular. But then over time, <clears throat> people started to see that I was someone who was putting out consistent content. And they started checking out my content. By ne the next year, 2009, I saw that I had so many viewers who were consistently coming to my channel that I upgraded my equipment appropriately. I felt that it made more sense to upgrade a camera, so I bought a better camera. And I, you know, kind of the rest is history. I'm certainly not going to go into the full history. Now, some people would argue that this is not factually correct. This is not my 12 year anniversary. Because technically, if you look at my original channel, Dark Side Phil, on YouTube, the first videos that I ever uploaded to it were from the summer of 2007. That is correct. My first videos I ever uploaded to YouTube were from an arcade tournament called Midwest Championships back in 2007. This was when I was in Competitive Street Fighter. This was one of the last Competitive Street Fighter tournaments I attended. I actually kind of hung up my mantle after EVO that year. But this tournament happened before then. And I recorded at that tournament. And those are the first videos ever on YouTube from me. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't until October 2008 that I started recording regular games on consoles and uploading that gameplay pretty much on a regular basis. I remember I started with Star Wars Force Unleashed, and then I did Dead Space, Highlights of Dead Space, and then I did Mercenaries 2, and then I did Fable 3, and my Fable 3 was almost like a full-on playthrough. Like I was recording almost everything I did in the game. Um... And then there was also Fallout 3, if I remember correctly, I did. So it was a good variety of stuff that I did at the end of that year. Uh, Left, I think that was Left 4 Dead as well, if I remember correctly, Left 4 Dead. So it was like a big amount of great games that I did all in a short period of time. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, good stuff. And yeah, 12 years that I've been consistently and regularly sharing my life with all of you putting out consistent gameplay content, doing my best to entertain you and make your, your day a little bit brighter uh, in a fucked up world that we live in, man. You know, I hopefully I'm doing something here to, to help you out. And, and, you know, a lot of people tell me all the time they appreciate what I do, um, you know, and uh, thank you for being my viewing audience for 12 years and sharing your life experiences with me as well. It's been a hell of a ride and we're not near the end yet. I plan on doing this for 50 years. That's right. I'm going to be doing this until I die. That's my goal. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what's... Who knows what's going to happen, right? There's no way to tell. That, you know, last year, in the spring of 2019, I was dead set on, on phasing out of doing this and not doing it anymore. And now this year with the pandemic, it's a good thing I didn't phase out of it. This has been my one of my best years ever when it comes to viewing attendance and the amount of support I got and the positivity around my content. And if I was doing another job, I might have lost everything. Like, no lie. If I had, like, stopped doing this and started doing another job, I could have lost everything. So, I don't know, man. <clears throat> I don't even know what to say anymore. Who knows how long this will last, but... Hey. Crazy. Anyway, the reason I bring this up is because Golden Colts cheered overnight. He said, I don't know if anyone mentioned it, but happy official 12 years of uploading gameplay to YouTube. It was Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Yeah. Thank you, Golden Colts, for reminding me. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Golden Colts. Cheered again. He said, you're a real OG. Can we hope for 12 more years? I mean, it would be nice. That's a nice thought. That I could keep doing this for an extended period of time. That we could all have fun on a daily basis. You know. And now that hopefully I'm, I'm climbing myself out of the, the hole that I was in financially. You know, improvements. Right? Actual improvements. Whether it be... A new chair, a new webcam, a green screen, a new PC. All these things, you know, kind of being possible now. <clears throat> really for the first time ever. So, good stuff. And then Golden Colts cheered again. He said, whatever the case, congratulations on the milestone. Thank you very much, Golden Colts. Lives of Her Soul resubscribed for four months this morning. So shout out to all the filthy waifus. 
You are a disgusting person, Lice for Soul, but I thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Lice for Soul also did a 250-bit cheer. This was the first cheer of the day. And he says, It saddens me when you come across assholes with mics and they tell you stupid shit rather than freaking out like a fan they're in the same lobby as the almighty DSP. Well, I almost never even play games with the mic on. As you guys know when I do, even if it's unrelated to anything with me, people, idiot trolls will fucking spam people who are in the same lobby as me. <clears throat> they literally just did it with the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War uh, Alpha. They were harassing people who were in the same lobby as me for no reason at all. They were just sending constant messages to them because they're fucking idiots. The only way to negate that kind of behavior is to mute all the mics so that way you don't have to hear it. People talking about it and therefore they won't do it because they realize there's no impact on anything, right? <clears throat> it definitely sucks because back in the day that didn't used to happen. If you remember, back in the day I didn't live stream. When I used to do, when, when, when Call of Duty really was at its height, you know, you're talking Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, I wasn't even live streaming. So people wouldn't be able to do that because they wouldn't be able to see the people who were in the lobby with me and spam them and harass them. But ever since I became a live streamer, now people fucking just do things to harass people live because they're pieces of shit. <clears throat> so, it sucks, but it's life. And what can you do, right? Internet Famous McCroy gives it a sub to my, my waifu's fat butt. You are also a disgusting individual, Internet Famous McCroy, but thank you for the, for the support. RBG fan cheer, you said, think about it. Those games are Halloween themed because they're the worst fear. Street Fighter Five and waifus. RBG fan, you are a disgusting individual. How dare you? But thank you for the cheer. Lies for Soul now did a 260-bit cheer and says, Those dumb fucks aren't going to vote for it, but Binding of Isaac has horror elements and could be played for an hour as a chill stream. Yeah, I've played the Binding of Isaac before. <clears throat> and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it does. It, it, it's, it's similar to other games I've played before. Um... And yeah, it does have. It definitely has like horror elements to it, um, even though it's a pixelated game on purpose. That's the design of it, right? But yeah, it's a pretty good game. Rob on wheels tipped me five dollars. That's the first tip of the day, and he says wanted to thank you for calling out the Fire Emblem complainers the last time that you played the game. I have to be honest, the last two videos really annoyed me because of the complaints. No one holds a gun to your head to watch Twitch streams. Rob is correct. Okay, Rob is very correct, and I will say this again. <clears throat> All I could do is say it over and over because people, it, it's, it's, I can't make people listen, okay? But what I can do is just, maybe if I say it enough, people will finally listen, okay? <clears throat> I'm a variety streamer. I'm not someone who is a master of any game, and I openly admit that. I'm better at certain genres of game, like old school Street Fighter. I'm much better at that than other, you know, other games that I play. But I'm not a master of anything. I am not one of these people that focuses in on one genre or one IP, I play everything. Because I am a jack of all trades, but a master of none, that means that every day when you come to my streams, you can see a completely different gameplay experience. Today, you're going to see a, a modern platformer with Crash 4. Tomorrow, you may see an older platformer with Super Mario Galaxy. Tonight, you're going to see Battle Royale. Well, actually, it's not really Battle Royale, but it's elimination-style survival fun with Fall Guys. Tomorrow night, you're going to see Mafia, right? <clears throat> In a given week, you can see a fighting game, a, a shooter, both first person and third person, an exploration game, a stealth game, a horror game, a driving game, a sports game, an RPG. Like, just think of the variety of stuff that I play, all right? That's what I pride myself on, that I have an audience of a lot of people, and they could tune in every day and say, okay, this is not what I'm looking for. I don't really like this kind of game, but I'll come back tomorrow because I know tomorrow Phil's doing something completely different that I do like, right? <clears throat> That's the point. <clears throat> I'm not putting out content expecting that every single person who watches my content will want to watch every single piece of content that I put out. In fact, I will blatantly tell you that is unreasonable. I am here putting out roughly six hours of gameplay a day plus pre-streams and other stuff. There's so much content I put out in a day. Who has enough free time to watch all of it in a given day? Probably nobody. It's expected that you pick and choose the content that you like and you either watch it live on stream or you can watch it back on demand when you have time over on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming. That's the point, okay? <clears throat> so when you get people who specifically go to a certain type of stream that they know they don't really like. 
And they say, let's see what Phil's up to today. And they boot it up. Oh, it's Fire Emblem. Oh, I hate JRPGs. This one's such a long, lengthy fucking weeaboo, waifu-infested shitstorm. And I don't like this game. So I'm going to sit here on the stream. And instead of instead of going off, okay, I know Phil to the, tomorrow Phil's doing something completely different. <clears throat> I'll probably like that more. I'll be back tomorrow. Instead, you purposely sit here on that stream. And you just take a dump. You pull your pants down. You spread your cheeks. And you just launch Lincoln Logs directly into the stream chat constantly. Even cheering sometimes. Cheering. And giving contributions attached to complaints about the game. Okay? What you do is you turn the stream into a toilet. You fill... The toilet starts to fill with your shit. And everyone else around us is, is trying to have fun with the game... And all we're doing is looking around and we're seeing piles of shit build up around us. Oh my god, this is disgusting. Look at the brown. It's really nasty. <clears throat> okay, we don't want that. We want to have fun with what we're doing. I wouldn't have played <clears throat> Fire Emblem. The link that I have if I didn't like the game. I do like it. Now, do I feel the game has shortcomings? Absolutely. The game is way too long. It drags out plot points way too long. And it expects that you're going to do multiple playthroughs of a game that's already 60, 70 hours long, which is insane to expect that from a gamer, okay? The common person is not expecting to play a 70-hour game three times to get the full story. And I'm not doing that. I'm only playing it once, all right? But that being said, there are many elements to the game that I really enjoyed, and I'm enjoying the end now. We've been, do we've been going through this game since May, <clears throat> okay? So I want to see the end of it. If you come to my Fire Emblem stream and you complain, I'm going to shit on you. You're going to take a shit on my stream, I'm going to pull down my pants, and I'm going to do a 360 shit right on you. I had enough. I'm not going to take this shit anymore. All right? This is the final couple streams of Fire Emblem. You should not be on a Fire Emblem stream if you don't like it. There's other stuff you can tune into every other stream I do. <clears throat> so stop it with this nonsense. <clears throat> Battle Duck 9000 just made a great point too. He says, aren't the late streams specifically meant to cater to slower moving games or things that are less popular? Exactly right, Battle Duck. That's the point. That's why Fire Emblem is not a mainstream over and over. Was it a mainstream? Yes. When it first released, or when I first started playing it, excuse me, uh, I absolutely did uh, do it <clears throat> as a main gameplay stream for a, a few times. And every once in a while, if I wanted to make major progress, I would squeeze it in as a main gameplay stream. But I did it way more often as a late stream, and that's the point. I know there's less people. I know it's less interest. It's okay to do a late night chill stream of a game like that, right? So do not come to my stream Monday night equipped to shit all over it. You won't be here very long. I will bury you way deeper than you could ever bury my stream. Trust me on that, okay? So stop that nonsense. <clears throat> and by the way, only two more streams left of Fire Emblem, and it's done anyway. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Eternal Napalm cheered. Now, here we go. Eternal Napalm cheered. He says, well, Fire Emblem playthrough is like cough syrup. You have to take it. You can only take it in small doses. You cannot wait until it's over with. Well, some people actually like cough syrup. They take it and they get high. Right? Some people get high off that shit. But that's not the point you're making. Um... Listen, some people actually really like Fire Emblem. I think we have, to, we have to respect that. Listen, it's just like fighting games. It's just like fighting games. Some people like them, some people don't. When I play them... Uh, oh my god, excuse me. That was absolutely revolting. I'm sorry. I didn't expect that to come out. It just came out of nowhere. <clears throat> anyway. Fighting games. Some people really like them. Some people hate them. Right? It all depends. So, in re regards to fighting games... I like them. I like playing them. I like learning techniques, trying to learn the meta of these games. Do I play them excessively? Absolutely not. But when I play them, I have good time. But some people just hate it. Do they come to every fighting game stream and just do liquid shits on it? Of course not. That's immature. That's stupid. You have better things you could do with your time than sit on a stream and hate on the game because it's a variety streamer who plays other games. Okay? Now, stop that. Okay, let's continue. RPG fan cheers. Does this mean you can finally visit P Dub's Island? No. Shook ones tipped me five dollars and said, "Are you waiting for Watch Dogs Assassin's Creed to come out on next gen to play, or are you going to play it as soon as it drops?" That's a good question. And Shook ones, I think that the answer is dependent on two factors. 
The first factor is, and this is the thing, is we don't have an answer yet. <clears throat> With these games, for example, Assassin's Creed and Yakuza 7 are both coming out on the 10th of November, but the PS5 doesn't come out until the 12th. I don't even know if I'm going to get the PS5 on launch day. Amazon has basically told everyone, don't count on it. We're going to try, but there's no guarantee you're getting it on launch day. Okay? So that being said, if I start playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Yakuza 7 on the 10th, will there be the capability, all right, to carry your game save over from the PS4 to the PS5 versions of the games? We know that some of these games, they've already promised a cross-gen upgrade, that you will be able to play it for free on the next gen. <clears throat> okay? That's great. You don't have to buy the game twice. I think it's really stupid that anyone would have to buy the game twice, right? But, that being said, we don't know if you can carry the, the save over. Um, so, I don't know. Now, here we go. Misakatron just said, Yakuza will not get an enhanced PS5 version until next year and no save transfer. If that's the case, if there's no benefit to playing it on PS5 over PS4, I see no reason to wait. That one I could start on November 10th. But with Valhalla, I think they've already said, yes, it is an upgrade on PS5. Um, if I can carry the save over, then I would say, yes, I'll, I'll do it. I'll play it. I'll start it on November 10th, and then we'll carry the save over and continue on PS5 to see, you know, graphically, how is the game improved or whatever load times, right? Those could all be interesting things to see. But the other factor is, you guys, the viewers, what if... You can't do that. What if it's proven you can't do it? Do you want do you care if I play it two days earlier on PS4 Pro and just do the whole playthrough on there? Or do you actually want me to hold off and play it two days later on PS5? Okay. <clears throat> Timbo Slice says, They already announced PS4 save transfers will not transfer on any game to the PS5. Xbox all saves will move over. I, dude, where did you hear that? <laughs> where on earth did you hear that because I haven't heard that at all I've basically heard that people don't know yet and they're curious to find out there's been no major announcement like that at all dude what are you saying if you have an article go by all means send it to me or tweet it to me I've not seen that anywhere <clears throat> source my ass <laughs> Anyway, by all means, send me that info. I've been waiting for that info, and I haven't seen anything like that in my circles. So, if that's the case, then, I mean, again, it's your call, guys. Would you like to see me start Assassin's Creed on the 10th on PS4 Pro and just do a playthrough on PS4 Pro, and who cares about PS5? Or do you want me to wait two days and start it on PS5? I mean, we're already going to have Demon Souls. We're already going to have the Sackboy game, the Astro game, um, uh, and Godfall. There's already going to be four ps5 games to play when the console launches so does it really matter if we also play assassin's creed valhalla on that or not <clears throat> i don't know i guess that would be your call guys okay all right um rpg fan cheered and said how come you're able to walk talk about your ear leaking but it's a perverted fantasy when i said i would like to be to choke me with her thighs because you're a disgusting freak shook wants to me two dollars so now that you mention it, November is really going to be a shit show. So many new releases plus the next gem. Good luck, Phil. Yeah, dude. It is going to be n insane. Absolutely nuts. One of the craziest gaming months in history. Okay. Um, Timbo Slice Cheer says, Don't play Star Wars. I had high hopes for it with how cool the trailers looked. I played it an hour. I'm bored of it. Single player is no story. It's just nonstop ship fighting. And in multiplayer, people already are cheating online by using exploits. You can tell it was pretty much made for VR using controllers. It's very glitchy. I'm happy it was free with EA Play Pro on PC. Not worth 40 bucks at all. So here we have an opinion that the game sucks monkey ass. Like literally sucking the butt. Do you guys want to see me play a game that sucks the butt but costs 40 bucks? I don't know about that. <clears throat> I don't know. Lunaba took me $2. His Crash 4 was so fun yesterday. I laughed pretty much the whole time. I'm glad to hear that, Lunaba. Thank you for the $2 tip. And uh, hopefully you'll laugh the whole time today, too. Hopefully today doesn't become super serious. <laughs> I don't know how the game could become super serious, but I guess we'll find out. 
Um, Elon just cheered. He said, heads up. Genshin Impact has tons of waifus in it. I actually found a new one to replace Tifa. I think you'll like the game. <laughs> it's a free-to-play game. I, I'll be honest with you. If I start Genshin Impact, it's going to be more of a curiosity thing just to see what the hell it is because it's free and everyone's talking about it right now. I seriously doubt I would play it at length. I'd probably do one, one two sessions tops and be like, okay, I see what it is, you know. OG Hustler has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, OG Hustler. I appreciate that. Um, Sonic says, tip me $4.20. It says, you should do more streams in the style of marathons. Pick out a couple of random games and play them for an hour or so. <clears throat> you can decide if you like them and you want to keep playing afterwards so you don't have to feel tied to playthroughs. Well, Sonic says, I actually agree with you, but I talked about this recently. I said, if I were like... Other popular streamers, which I'm not. I'm very, very, let me emphasize. I'm very, 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 very different from most other streamers. Because I'm in a unique situation where sadly I have a group of asshole trolls that follow me all around the internet and say negative, nasty, slanderous shit about me constantly. I don't get any opportunities like other streamers. For example, other streamers <clears throat> get promotional opportunities. They get free copies of games. Indie games, mainstream games, they just get them because people feel that they're influencers who can get people to buy their games if they play them on their streams. So there may be a, a you know a streamer, oh, today I'm doing a random games day where we're going to play six, seven random games for an hour, right? Because they didn't pay for the games. They were just given free stuff and they're able to mess around like that. I don't get those opportunities. Every time that I get any kind of an opportunity, these idiots ruin it for me. Perfect example of this earlier this year, Hori, a company that I use frequently with accessories on consoles, okay? I use their Hori Real Arcade Pro 4 joystick all the time on my PS4 for fighting games. And I was using the Hori Pad on my Switch ever since last summer because I hated the, the Pro Controller. And someone got me a Hori Pad and I really liked it, okay? So I've been using Hori accessories for years and years. Well, a Hori representative who watched my content and saw that I was basically liking their their stuff reached out to me early this year i want to say it was like february and they said hey phil since you're a fan of our products we'd like you to demo one of our products okay we're gonna send you this pad for the switch that basically turns the switch into a real controller because everyone complains the joy cons are shit because they are the joy cons are shit um and they said here's something better and then you could use it. I said, this is perfect. If you send me this, I can use this for Animal Crossing. And I can use this for other games and test it out. And I could do a review for you guys. You know, and they said, sure, this sounds great. And, you know, if this works out, maybe we'll have future opportunities uh, lined up for you. Okay? <clears throat> so, completely unannounced. I didn't, I didn't talk about this early. I didn't hype it up. I just, out of the blue, I dropped a review of this accessory for the Switch. Citing both my experiences and my wife's experiences because she had been playing Animal Crossing with the thing and she really liked it. All right. So I dropped this video. I linked it, you know, on my social media and I sent it to the Hori representative. Within one day, the shithead, you know, scumbags who hate me had completely spammed all of Hori's social media saying, How dare you give a product to Phil? He's a piece of shit. He's a racist. He's a scam artist. You know, all the same, completely nonsensical, not true, garbage slander about me. They did. They basically spammed the fuck <clears throat> out of their social media. Okay? So, I just said whatever. And I paid no attention to it at all. Hori never contacted me ever again. They never even followed up and said, oh, good job on the video. Thanks for doing it. They literally just said, well, blacklist them. Because, you know, every time he does anything related to us, we're going to have all this negative social media attention and we don't want it. You know, the same thing happened back when the YouTube, the, I said YouTube, back when the Twitch sponsorship started happening. If you don't, or if you're not aware, Twitch has a bounty program where game developers and game publishers pay money to Twitch and they say, here's a promotional opportunity. If you get a streamer to play our game for a set amount of time, We'll pay them a certain amount of money. It gets exposure to our games on Twitch. So I did two of these in 2018. Both times, my haters went and spammed the living shit out of the companies who made the games. Same exact situation. And those companies went to Twitch and said, this is the opposite of what we want. The point that we're paying you for here is to get free advertisement and positive stuff for our games. 
And what happened is these idiots spammed our social media for a week because Phil played our games. So we just don't want this to happen anymore. What, what will you do? Essentially, what, what Twitch did, they blacklisted me from the program. I have a page that says bounties that has not populated a new bounty in over two years. It just sits there blank. The last time I talked to Twitch about it, they lied to me. They said, oh, that's just because there's no opportunity. It was bullshit. Everyone was telling me, oh, yeah, I, I'm a streamer on Twitch, and I have these, all these bounties in my inbox. What about you? I have none. They turned off the program for me. <clears throat> okay? So in regards to... um doing a marathon of these games when you see streamers that do that likely it's one of two things either that streamer got a ton of free games for promotional opportunities because they don't have these negative scumbags following them around that ruin those opportunities for them or those streamers make way more money they're not in the same financial situation as me so in one day they could drop five hundred dollars to buy 10 games right and it's okay to them oh i spent five hundred dollars today but i made a grand so who cares if I dropped 500 to buy a variety of games that may turn into future stream projects because it was all a good investment for me. Versus me, like I spend 40 bucks on Star Wars Squadrons, the game's a bust, that's actually a big detriment to me. That's money that could have went elsewhere to pay a bill, could have bought a different game that you guys wanted to see, could have paid back taxes, could have done way more important stuff. You see what I'm saying? So I'm in a very different situation than most other streamers and that's why I don't frequently do marathons. But when I do them as special events, <clears throat> I do enjoy doing them. <clears throat> Elon Just cheered. He said, have you thought about focusing on Call of Duty Cold War and getting good at it and streaming that full time? FaZe Burnell has a good ring to it. I would never be accepted to any competitive esports team for the very same reasons I just mentioned. Even if I was the best goddamn player on the planet, those teams would be bombarded with so much negative shit from these really just mentally ill scumbags that they would never accept me on a team. Um... If Call of Duty Cold War is good and I like it, will I play it a lot? Yeah, I probably would. I'll probably put it into the regular rotation where I do maybe a couple streams a week of the multiplayer of it. You know, I've done that before. With previous Call of Duties, I've done that. And the game, when I played it in the alpha, I could say this. The gunplay seemed reactive and fun. The stages seemed interesting. But does that mean anything? No. It could be the connections will be shit. You know, there could be things, variables thrown in there that ruin it. I don't know. But... I am excited to try it out, especially because I'm going to be doing it as a PS5 game. So we'll see. We'll see how things turn out, okay? <clears throat> Forced to watch Phil. Just hit me $5. So there's a sh here's a shitty contribution. Congrats on 12 years. Don't shit on me. <laughs> well, forced to watch Phil. I hope you enjoy today's crash stream that you're being forced to watch against your will. Anyway, thank you for the contribution. I appreciate that. RPG fan cheered again and said, not that this justifies the excessive complaining. But I'll say when I played Fire Emblem, my favorite part was the dating quest. And I think you missed on arguably the best part of the game. That's your opinion. I don't give two shits about the dating quest because I don't care about virtual dating. So there you go. To each their own. <clears throat> okay. Um. FL Gibson did a 50-bit cheer. And says, will you consider playing retro mode today for Crash? It's easy to switch. I think the stream viewers would like it. No. There's literally no th no reason to play retro mode. As we know now, because I played this yesterday. Um, the difference between retro mode and, and modern mode is pretty, pretty simple. Um, retro mode has limited lives. If you run out of lives, you have to start the stage from the beginning, erasing all checkpoints. Modern mode means you never run out of lives. Okay? Um... <clears throat> That's the only difference. So, in the old Crash games, or retro mode, classic mode, whatever you want to call it, when you ran out of lives, you had to go grind elsewhere to get lives, then you would go back and just take the stages on again. This game modernized and said, well, we realize it's a waste of your time to have to go grind for lives. We'll just give you infinite lives because the game is challenging enough as it is, right? So they streamlined the process. Does that make it easier or harder? No. Literally all it does, it cuts out grinding for extra lives. That's it. So people complaining retro versus modern are idiots. Literally, you're a fucking idiot if you think there's any added benefit to having to repeatedly go back and grind for extra lives just to go back to the same stage you were at and start it over. It's an outdated gameplay mechanic that they took out of it because it makes no sense. Now, if you absolutely want the, the added gameplay element, okay, of doing that, and you want it to feel like old-school Crash... 
fine, you're welcome to do it, but why the fuck would I do that for stream? All I would be doing is extending the playthrough for tediousness and boredom. It wouldn't add anything positive. It wouldn't even add added rage. It would just be fucking boring to have to see me go back and grind for extra lives. So if you're asking for it, you're an idiot. Stop asking for stupid shit to annoy me because that's what you're doing it for. Okay. <clears throat> Joe, the WXMan17, tipped me a dollar and said, Have you ever felt burnout streaming or playing games in your career? Do you feel that burnout is possible in the near future? In the near future, no. In fact, quite the opposite. With the launch of new consoles and new all these new games and seeing how they're going to perform, this is when it actually gets exciting, okay? Um, I remember when the PS4 and Xbox One launched, it was super exciting for that whole year to see what games were coming out, were they performing well, etc. It was a really exciting year, and I know it's kind of going to be the same thing here. It's really going to be exciting, okay? <clears throat> so, no, but there are times. Absolutely, there are times when there could be feel, what, feeling of burnout, Um if there's not a lot of great games coming out, and you're like, man, I gotta do streaming today, but there's, there's nothing to play. The good news is, as I've told you guys, this last year has kind of, I felt, has been a positive reinvigoration to the streams. Because not only is it about the games, it's about us having fun interacting. We've got fun, silly things that we do, like the vet, vest streak was a really cool thing for a while. And, you know, there's different stuff going on that's entertaining about the streams that's not just about the games even if we get a downtime of dead games and there's not a lot going on if we could still do entertaining stuff on the streams i have not gotten to a point at all where i feel like there's a lack of content it's the opposite there's so many things going on in the world of gaming that i really have an overabundance of things to do and i have to pick and choose the specific ones that i want to do because there's so much all right i'll be honest joe when i was a full-time youtuber around the years of 2015 2016 I was burnt out. I was at a point where I was feeling like I was doing it just for the sake of doing it to, as a job. Um, a lot of the games at that time were not very good, in my opinion. I was covering them just because they were new releases, not because I was super interested in them. Um, and doing it that formula of ignoring my viewing audience, okay, just for the sake of doing a gameplay stream or whatever... And doing it like as if I were offline playing by myself, it didn't work. It was dying out. It was very archaic the way I was doing stuff, okay? Um, that's why in 2016, if you remember, I actually, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually ch did a whole edited gameplay channel where it was edited videos, reviews, because I was so bored of doing it the old way and I knew it wasn't going to work anymore. There was a major decline in my viewership. I had to change it up. All right. So is burnout possible? Absolutely. But in particular, this last year, it's been the opposite. Like I feel completely reinvigorated. I have tons of fun on stream every day with you guys. I'm excited to come here every day. Today in particular, there's no sun outside. It's a cloudy day. It's cool. It's fall. We're playing a new release. It's going to be silly fun where I'm going to die a million times. We can all laugh at my how bad I am at this effing game. We're going to have a good time together. I'm excited for today. You know? So, hopefully, we can keep it at this level. You know, I would like to keep it at this level for years if I can. But we got to see what happens. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> Battle Duck 9000 tipped me $20 and says, opposed to liquid shits, here's something nice and solid. All right. Well, thank you, Battle Duck. The biggest tip of the day. Let's get that on the leaderboard. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're up to $44 in tips today. Hey, that means I only need to raise another 56 in order to not be in the red from the $100 chargeback I got this morning. <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you very much, Battle Duck. Appreciate that. RBG fan chase said, that's messed up. I heard you got banned from blank, too. Did the trolls miss the opportunity? Yep, well, it's, I don't know what it is because it, it, it's gone. I don't even know what you said. It was blocked out. The trolls basically got me kicked out of any any positive promotional program ever any any you know any sponsorship opportunity i had um was negated because they realized if they just harass the company on social media they'll drop me no matter what and they've done it every single fucking time okay <clears throat> timbo slice cheers my city is now in a public health emergency due to the dumb local government my area can't force places to close down because they said it's illegal to do so I'm sick and tired of the government looking out for their political life 
instead of my community's health when we have to build a temporary hospital due to hospital overflow. We have doctors in our area pleading people to wear masks. That's how bad it is. Yeah, well, you know, don't worry because, you know, the, the, the people in our government who don't think it's serious are now all getting sick because they all attended a super spreader event last this last week and they're all getting the coronavirus. So it's funny what happens when you when you push bad behavior on others. All right. And now you have mass amounts of people who think that it's a hoax and think that it's fake. And oh, you don't have to wear a mask. Right. They're, they're impeding our freedoms. Yeah, I saw something that I have to agree with this morning on social media. It was a picture of a mask and it said, wear damn mask. It's not a political statement. It's an IQ test. Sorry, but I have to agree with that at this point. I have to. How the fuck you think this thing is fake at this point? You just have to be the dumbest motherfucker on this planet. You have to be. It's not about your personal freedoms. It's not about, oh no, they're going to take away all of our, 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 our freedom of choice and everything. It's about surviving, you dumb fuck. If you think that not wearing a mask and killing people is acceptable in the United States of America, you should go somewhere else. I mean that. You should leave. Go somewhere where, you know, people don't care about each other. Because at least in this country, we're supposed to be caring for the fellow American. And if you don't think that's a priority, then you should leave. And that's all I have to say about it. If you're not okay with protecting your fellow neighbor, you should leave this country and go somewhere else where apparently you don't care about anyone. Because that's not how this country operates. It's not how it ever has. It's supposed to be a group success, right? We all work together to have freedom. The reason we have the freedoms we have is because people sacrifice for us to have them. Our military, right? Who protect us, who give us the protections and things that we have every day. We wouldn't have any of the freedoms if people didn't sacrifice their own safety and health for us. So if the military's only been doing it forever... Why the fuck can't you just put a paper mask on your fucking face, you stupid, idiotic, greedy, selfish piece of crap? And if you disagree with me, you're stupid. <laughs> it's an IQ test. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> Eternal Napalm Charity says, If Scumbags didn't slander or defame your good, good name, where do you think your business relative to where it is now wait where do you think you see your business relative to where it is now why do the idiots waste time for their lives pestering you eternal napalm this is a question we've asked many times they've latched on to me for whatever reason they've even created entire social communities on the internet around shitting on me because they found out they could get away with it and youtube won't do a damn thing about it twitch will twitch will if twitch sees that kind of behavior they will step up and take care of it but youtube doesn't care so youtube has become a haven for toxic bullying behavior and they won't do anything about it so because of that these people run rampant doing whatever they want okay they've found success they've found actual social relationships have been formed around these people just shitting on me in different circles and therefore it's become a part of their lives so as consistent as i am as a content creator telling you i'll be here and i'm not going anywhere they will consistently be there to shit on me because it's become this sycophantic relationship right if I don't exist, they don't exist. So they have to keep doing what they're doing. Even though the stuff that they say about me these days, most of the time is completely fabricated and made up. It's complete, Anything that they say negative about me is usually something completely out of context, spun in a way to be dramatic for their own personal benefit. There's content creators on YouTube that literally make videos up. It, the stuff they say in the titles of their videos is false. It's slander. But they get away with it, right? Because they want that clickbait view. So... As long as I exist, they will exist. And the day that I decide to retire from doing this, they will no longer be significant to this planet. It's that simple. FL Gibson just cheers. Says, I don't know why you're calling me an idiot for suggesting retro mode. Because it's stupid. It's pointless. I've explained logically why it's dumb to ask for it. So if you can't understand that, I can't make you smart. Penis Parker tipped me a dollar. Said, bruh, eight vest goals are more than what the president paid in taxes. America is wild now. Sucks that people with a shitload of money pay less than lower to mid-class Americans. Hope you're staying safe. Uh, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know how else to respond to that. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thank you for the dollar tip. <clears throat> okay, time to shout out the top cheers of the week. Thank you to those who cheered so far this week. I appreciate your support. In tenth place, Chemical Camel. 
The ninth place, Mr. Minecraftish One. Eighth place, Melody Zelda. Seventh place, RPG Fan. Tied with Robert Evans, so technically that's a tie for sixth. Fifth place, Bubble Buddy. Fourth place, Dark Side Kenny. Third place, Shadow the Hedgehog. Second place, Nin Star Rune. And in first place for this week, Lysifer Soul. Thank you guys very much for the support. Also, thank you to the top subscription gifters of the week. In tenth place, Pizza Pizza what the fuck is that? Pizza Pasta. I couldn't read it. It's not tenth place. It's these people gifted a single sub this week. Pizza Pasta, Beast Bod, Triplication, Zero Falcon, Noah Taylor, and X4 Faithbreaker. Then we've got people who get the two subs this week each, including Ultimate Cloud 7, Big D's, and Randy O. Butternub. And in first place, five gifted subs, Internet Famous McCroy. Thank you guys for the support this week. I appreciate it. Now, we're going to go on a brief break for me to use the restroom. All right. Um, When I come back, we resume. Crash Bandicoot 4. If you guys like the content and you want to support it, please, guys, tip me today. I'm still negative. By, I, I, you know, I had a $100 charge back first thing this morning that I need to make up for before I can even make a dollar profit today. So thank you to those who contributed so far. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. And uh, let's have fun today. All right. I'll be back in just a moment with Crash. See you in a sec. 